You know, in a time of worship, it's just really just setting ourselves apart for him to speak to us directly in just the way that we need to hear it. And I believe throughout today, throughout the service today, the Holy Spirit is going to minister to you just the way you need it. And before we get into the word, and, and today is a, a special day, and uh, because to me it's a, it's a, even though we may do it as a ceremonial thing within a service, I believe it's something that's holy. I believe it's something that, that is significant between the parents and God. And so, so this morning, I believe just an act of baby dedications is to me an act of worship. It's an act of worship. Amen, I believe every, every child is a gift. Every child is a gift. And, and it's one of those things where as parents, we can't do what we're called to do as it pertains to our children without him. So baby dedication isn't just a a, a formality of something, but it's saying, God, I'm requiring you to anoint me and grace me to raise up this child in the way that they should go. Amen? Amen. And before we call the the families up, usually I'll call the families up and and I'll do this then, but I I just want everyone to just hear what's what's taking place because, because this act of baby dedication, like I said, it is an act of worship. It's saying, God... I'm trusting you with what you have blessed me with. I'm honoring you with what you have honored me with, with this child. No matter how the child might have come or how it came about, realizing, God, I'm, I'm needing you in this. Lord, I, I give this child back to you. Because your purpose for this child's life is far greater than I could ever imagine. The purpose for this, 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 this child is, is, is something that, has, that you have a plan for, that you have a destiny for, that is something that I couldn't even possibly imagine. So Lord, I, I humbly give this child back to you. The word also talks about as parents, it says that we're to bring a child up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. You know, when I first would read that scripture years ago, that scripture didn't nurture in the admonition of the Lord. What does that mean? I said, I need that. I need you to justinize that for me. I need, I need, I need some help with how do I bring a child up in the nurture in the admonition of the Lord? And, and very simply, the Holy Spirit told me this. He goes, he goes, you bring them up in a way that you are the very reflection of heaven to them that you nurture them and bring them up just like the heavenly father would bring them up. You, you are the greatest example of Jesus. You're the greatest example of a heavenly father to them in the earth. Where, where when they look at you, they can say, that's God. That's, that's what God looks like. And that's, that's, that, that, can be, that can be challenging as a parent. That's, that can be challenging as a parent, but the issue is, is you have him to help you. You have the gift of all gifts, the word of God and the Holy Spirit to help us. And that's what this baby dedication is all about. It's saying, God, I need you to be able to show them what you're like. And I know there, there's a lot of, Families and, and how you grew up, maybe you didn't see the greatest example of that. But the thing is, is you can make a difference in the next generation. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and call the, the names of the children and the families and whoever you want to come up with you. Could be a lot of people, so we'll, we'll see here. But So the parents and those coming up for Joanna Boyko. Janiah Holiday. I apologize if I say these wrong. Hunter Ferris. Katie Ferris. Iker Torres. Gracelyn Rose Torres. 
I know this family wasn't, they weren't positive they get a beer, but Mahogany Joy Grace Foreman and Lily Vargo. We'll spread out this way. Annette, can you come up with me? <laughs> oh, you can come down this way. Hallelujah. Give them a hand. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, <laughs> oh. Oh. Is there anything you'd like to say? I'll put you on the spot. Oh. <laughs> They're precious. Oh. Oh, Annette loves God. babies. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Father. Mm. Lord, we invite your presence here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Mm. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we praise you. Oh. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm. Just stretch your hands towards them. Mm. Father, we just thank you. For every child that's up here, Lord. And Lord, we dedicate them to unto you today. Just as if we were standing in the very throne of God, we know there is no distance in prayer. There's no distance. And we thank you that you are here. Where two or three, there you are in the midst of us. So I thank you. We dedicate these children, unto you today, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for the parents. I thank you for just peace in their homes. I thank you that today, as they've chosen to bring their child before you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they were able to see things differently, see things in a way they haven't seen them before as it pertains to the role as parents. And we just thank you for your hand upon these children, your hand upon these parents. And we thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. And Father, we dedicate this child unto you, Father. that they give back to Father what you have blessed them with. And Lord, we just speak this over all the children that are up here. Lord, we de declare that they are called for such a time as this. Lord, we just thank you for every purpose that you have ordained for them. Thank you, Father. We declare that their destiny is protected. We declare that no weapon formed against these children will prosper in any way. Thank you that they will fulfill all their days. Mm. We declare that the wicked one touches them not. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. How you doing, sir? Very good. Amen. Oh, Father, we bring this child. Mm. What a gift. What a precious gift. And Lord, even the way that we look at this child right now, Lord, I just thank you that no matter how old we are, you still look, us, look at us as individuals in the same way. I thank you for your plan and purpose. <laughs> Thank you, Father, that she will know your voice at a young age. All the children will know your voice at a young age. Lord, and I just thank you for just your direction, your hand upon the parents, Father. Thank you, Lord, just causing within them to see the value of who you are and the importance, Lord. 
that you're the center and that you are the one that brings ultimate peace into our lives. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Dedicate her unto you, Father. Hand upon her, Father. Every child would know your voice, just like Eli did at a young age, Lord. Oh, we dedicate them unto you today, Father. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that they're protected. Thank you that you protect their spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That when things may come or things may happen, I just thank you, Lord, that they will know. They will know, Lord, your intervention. They will know your hand, Father. We dedicate them unto you today. Thank you that every child, Lord, would know the love of God that passes knowledge. That every child would know that love. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Oh, this is my granddaughter. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you. We dedicate Lily unto you. We dedicate this child unto you today. Thank you, Father, for the joy that every one of these children that will bring to other people around them. Thank you, Lord. We declare over these children, Lord, that they will have peace in their mind. We declare that no weapon formed against them prospers in any way. We declare over every child that we have prayed over today, we declare that they are blessed coming in and they're blessed going out. We declare that every one of these children are above only and not beneath. We declare where the enemy would come against them one way, he has to flee seven ways. Hallelujah. We declare that they're the head and not the tail. They're above only and not beneath. Hallelujah. Thank you that you bless everything that they set their hand to as they grow up. We declare, Lord, that they will fulfill all their days. Lord, and we thank you that every parent is anointed and gifted and graced for every single child that they have. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you've anointed them for the children. Hallelujah. That you have blessed them with. And I thank you, Lord, that they as parents make a decision that I will be and I will pursue God. I will be a pursuer of God. That every parent makes that decision today that I choose to pursue God because I can't be the man or I can't be the woman that I've been called to be without him. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Give him a shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Woo. Hallelujah. Tanya. So do you want to, um, after the service or now? Okay, we can take any, any children to the nursery that would like to go. And after the service, uh, we have a Bible. We have a Bible for you and you've already given your certificate. Oh, you already have the Bibles, okay. Hey, you're on top of it. Praise the Lord, there we go. Go, give them another hand, amen. Hallelujah. All that energy. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Mm. Bless you. Just looking around at all the faces, young faces. Amen. Once again, uh, we've already said this, but we want to continue to thank you for all the prayers, the, the words the things that you've reached out to, not just Heritage of Faith, but Jerusalem Ministries. Thank you for your continued prayers around uh, Miss Carolyn and the family, and um, just continued to, continuing to just release the peace of God and the presence of God over them, wisdom, direction, and guidance in every way. Amen. Amen. I also want to thank Sandra and Chris Goodman for being here. Appreciate them, and um, and so are you. You and Nikki, several. You're going to do Kingdom Builders today, is that it? So he's here with Kingdom Builders, and 
and all that. Appreciate them, just great partners and believe in this ministry and we're grateful for their faith, their belief in us. And so give them a hand. Amen. Just... <laughs> Hallelujah. <sighs> you know, it was a number of weeks ago that um, I, and I've been ministering on, on faith and the Lord just said, I want you to go back and talk on the basics of faith. And um, because I believe, one, faith is what pleases God. Amen. Faith is what pleases God. Faith is not a message. Faith is not a formula. Faith is not a movement. Faith is not a denomination. But faith pleases God, and the just do what? We live by faith. We know according to 1 John 5, 4, what this church is built and established upon, that our faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Faith is your key to victory. Wherever you're at right now, know that faith is the victory that's going to cause you to rise above where you are, to walk through where you are, and to get, where, get you where God wants you to be. Faith. I, I wrote a couple of quotes down from our founding pastor, Dr. Savell, and just thinking about him and thinking about things that I've learned from him over the years. And... Um, one of the statements he, I have written down is, never doubt that God is a good God and that he loves you more than you could possibly imagine. Another quote he, I have of his, it says, God expects us to take this message of faith we've been given and grow it. Amen? We grow from faith to faith, right? We never plateau at a place of faith, but we're going from faith to faith. We are heritage of faith, and we believe that is the message. I believe it's, it's not a message of the 70s or the 80s or the 90s, but it's the message of today. It's the message of the book. It's the, it, was the, it would be the message of Abraham. It would be the message of Abel. It's the message of Enoch. It's the message of, of Joseph. It's the message of, uh, of Noah. It's the message of Moses. It was the message of David, Jephthah, Samson. It's, it's the message of today. It's the message that we need to possess. It's a message that we need to war with. It's a message that we need to hold on to because it is the victory that will cause us to overcome. And so we're gonna continue talking about honoring our heritage of faith. You know, faith, a life of faith. I learned this from Dr. Savell that, that faith has three positions in the word of God. Number one, faith, we have the word of faith. We have the law of faith, which is found in Romans chapter 3, 27. The word of faith is Romans 10, 8. And then we have the spirit of faith, which is 2 Corinthians 4, 13. So what is the, what is the word of faith? The word of faith is the message of faith. The law of faith is the application of how you walk in faith. And then you have the spirit of faith, which is the lifestyle of faith. And I'm all about lifestyle. This, this, this has to become a lifestyle to us, this living by faith. Go to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18 and If you're into titles for messages, I'm gonna talk call this Faith's Foundation. Faith's Foundation. Thank you, Father. Because if you're, we're gonna build anything it has to be on the right foundation, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Verse one it says, then he spoke a parable to them that men, that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Now this is Jesus about speaking of, uh, as going into a parable and it says he spoke this parable to them that men always always, say always. always, men ought always to pray and not to lose heart. I refuse to lose heart 
no matter what I'm going through. See, the enemy would love for you to lose heart. What is, what is a form of depression? A form of depression is you're losing heart. And see, the enemy would get, love to get us to live in a place of losing heart because heart, your heart is where, where faith is. Faith is in two places. It's in, your, it's in your heart and it's in your mouth. So if you lose heart, that means you've let go of faith. And I refuse to let go of faith. I will not lose heart. But it says, men ought always to pray and not faint. Meaning, always pray. What does that mean? This is not necessarily talking about a formality of prayer, but this is talking about the, this is talking about the relationship with prayer. Prayer is not a, is not a monologue. Prayer is a dialogue. Prayer is not some sort of religious ritual that I'm doing in order to, to, to recite something or say something that I memorize, but prayer really in reality is about communion with God. It's about being hooked up with the source. It's about it being hooked up with prosperity. It's about being hooked up with healing. It's about being hooked up with anointing. It's about hooking up, being hooked up with favor. It's about being hooked up with power. It's about being hooked up with God's ability. So when it says men ought always to pray, isn't it just talking about that I need to take this moment and be religious for a moment and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, this, this religious idea of prayer. No, Jesus referring to having a connection with heaven. Jesus said in John 15, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you would ask what you will and it be done for you. So we have to understand this abiding aspect of this life of faith is where it's at because faith is not mechanical, it's relational. And as, as people, as, as, um, as just human nature, we want to know step one, step two, steps three, step four. And all of a sudden, if you do that, do it that way, then all of a sudden you get into looking at a, at a relationship with God as mechanical. And it was never meant to be mechanical. It was all about being relational. Second Peter, I believe, says this. It says that grace in peace is multiplied to us according to our knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you don't have any, if you don't are operating in God's grace or God's peace, it lets me know something. You have run out of knowledge. Because grace and peace multiplies to me according to my knowledge. If you just say, Pastor, I, I, I can't take anymore, you just let me know you've run out of knowledge. Well, well, Pastor, I just, I just don't know what the next step is. Okay, I understand that, and it's, and it's okay to have that thought process, but we, what we have to do is do what Jesus said, what it says here. It says, men ought always to pray and not lose heart. Let's keep reading. It says, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. So let, let's establish this. There was, a, there was a, 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 in a certain city, there was a judge, and it tells us that he did not fear God and he did not regard man, meaning he didn't care about God and he didn't care about you. So we're talking about a natural we're talking about a natural man here and this natural man who has authority, that has ability, but yet it says he doesn't care about God and he doesn't care about man. Then it says this. It says, now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get me justice, get justice for me from my adversary. So we're seeing here, now who who is this? What do we know about her? We know she's a widow. So we know she's experienced something difficult. She knows that she's, she's, go, she's going through something rough right now. Maybe, maybe, she's, maybe she's lost everything. So maybe this aspect, it's, it's affecting her peace level. It's affecting the fact that she's alone. It's affecting her finances. It's affecting everything. And it's this woman that's a widow woman. And she goes to this, this judge that doesn't care about really people and doesn't care about God. And she goes, avenge me of my adversary. 
Now, you, you have to understand, she went to the one that had the ability to rule in her favor. So she went, to, she went to the person that had the ability to do something about it. A lot of times we like to go to people that can't change our situation. We want to go to other people just, to, just, to, just for us to feed, f- feed them kind of what we're facing and what we're going through. But at least she went to the person that had the ability to do something about what she was going through. Avenge me of my adversaries. Meaning, what was, this, what was she saying? I, 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 I need payback. I need you to, to take care of this for me. What the enemy has done to me, I need God, I, this judge, I need you to do something about this. Thank you, Father. Verse four says, and he would not for a while. I mean, he, why? Because he didn't care about her. But afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, she weary me. Bottom line is, he didn't want to have to deal with her anymore. (laughs) It's like, if I don't do something about this, she is, like my last nerve was here and she's here. And it's like, I, he thought with it himself. But it was after a while. It was after a while. Verse nine says, then the Lord said, hear what the unjudge, the unjust judge said. So what did, he, what did he say? He goes, after a while. We know he didn't regard man. We know he didn't regard God. But it says, because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. I'm going to get her, I'm going to do something about, I'm going to rule in her favor because she wearies me. So we wanted us to hear what the unjudge just said. Then it says this, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him. Now this cry out isn't necessarily a form of, of what it's referring to as a begging or a pleading to try to beg God enough to get God to do something about it. This is more declaring where my aid is and where my help is. When cry out day and night, I know where my help is and I know where my aid is. Just laying a foundation here. Shall not God, shall not God, won't God Avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with you. He bears long with you. You see, the one said he wearies me, but for God, he bears long with you. Do you know how much God loves you? Do you know how much he cares about you? I want you to know that when we cry to him, he answers. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 33, three says, call unto me and I'll answer and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. See, that that is faith. I'm crying to the one who is the answer. I'm not crying about my situation, but I'm crying to the one that can aid me in my situation. It's not a lack of faith to cry out to God and say, I need help. That's not, that's not a lack of faith. The point is, is saying, I'm crying to the one that has the ability to set me free. And you've heard my story. Without going in great detail, in 1993, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was tired of being hopeless. I was tired of being depressed. I was tired of being able, not being able to see my future. I was tired of, of not, not being able to see, God, what plan do you have for my life? How am I gonna get there? I, there's something in me that's crying out to you and I don't know how to get it, but yet I keep making the wrong decisions. I keep going the wrong direction, but God, I, if you're real, I need you. And you know the story. Some of you know the story. If you don't, I had a respiratory disease at 19 years of age. And I heard, I heard his voice because I said, God, if you're real, I need you. That was, even though I might not have been a widow at the time, there were things in my life that I had lost. I had lost my health. I had lost, lost direction. I had lost, I had lost focus. I had, I had lost any sense of what is my life about? But yet I had enough on the inside of me that I know that if God is real, he's the one that has the answer. 
And I cried out to him. I said, God, if you're real, I need to know that you're real. And I cried out in that moment. And I said, God, if you're real. And all of a sudden, just plain as I heard this voice on the inside of me saying, tell me you love me. Tell me you love me. I started saying, I love you. I love you. I love you. I started, to, I started to sweat a little bit and I had a high fever and I couldn't breathe. And, 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 and all of a sudden, I was like, this is crazy. I'm talking to myself. I'm hearing things. I'm talking to myself. I can't breathe. But yet I cried out again. I cried out again. I was like, God, if you're real, I need you. And I heard that voice again said, turn away from the TV and tell me you love me and don't stop. I've told you this, that I say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I don't know how long I said that, but it went from I love you to I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love, you see, the faith in me, I didn't know anything about faith. I hadn't been taught anything about faith. But yet I knew where my help was. And I cried out, God, if you're real, I need you. And it went from I love you, I, I love you, Lord, to it went from I love you to I love you, Lord. 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 And next thing you know, I, my fever broke. And all of a sudden now I could breathe, 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 <laughs> breathe. And, 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 and I got up and started doing some sort of dance, I, I, something I hadn't seen. But, but I'm telling you, when you, you couldn't breathe and all of a sudden now you can breathe, What, that was me releasing my faith. I was crying out to him. And I'm telling you, God had to bear long with Justin. I, God is a God of long suffering. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. And I'm telling you, even though things in my life didn't all in the natural, all of a sudden turn around. Yes, my physical body did, but yet what about the hopelessness? What about my destiny? What about my future? That day, all of a sudden something came into me that day because I, my, relationship was no, my relationship with God wasn't established on what my mama or my dad had experienced with God, but now it was something that I experienced myself. Yeah. You cannot live a life of faith on. on someone else's experience. You have to pursue God. And I'm telling you, when you pursue God, I'm telling you, he will show up in the midst of the adversity that you're going through and he will avenge you of your adversary. On that day, he avenged depression. He avenged sickness. He, he, he avenged hopelessness in my life. I came, out of that situ I came out of that situation, went back home to because uh, my parents lived about an hour away and I was working at a liquor store at the time. I went back to the liquor store and I went and gave my notice and I said, today, I said, I'll give my two weeks notice. And, and they were like, well, what happened? I said, I said, I'm saved. God healed my body because they knew I was battling sickness. And they said, God healed my body. And they were like, um, you, today can be your last day. <laughs> <laughs> And then, so I didn't even say anything to my parents. I didn't, I didn't even say anything to my mom. And, and all of a sudden, I came up, she goes, uh, she goes well, Justin, would you, um, I, I said, well, aren't you going to work? I said, uh, no, I, um, I, I left my job today. She goes, what happened? And I didn't even, she didn't even know I got healed at this time necessarily. She knew something was different. But also, I said, I said, Mom, I'm moving to Salisbury, Salisbury, Maryland. I said, that's, that's, that's where I'm going to go. And she goes, well, what are you going to do for a job? And this is what came out of me. If God can heal me, he sure can find me a job. Well, what are you going to do about all, all your friends and all your relationships? Well, if God can heal me, he can sure find me a new set of friends. Because see, but there wasn't, I, I didn't necessarily have the word. I knew about Jesus. But the issue is faith was, couldn't be mechanical. It has to be relational. Yes. And we'll get into that. Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect who cry, day and, cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with you? I tell you that he, he, 
will avenge them speedily. It, it doesn't need to take 20 years. Restoration can happen in a moment. You can get direction in a moment. He can set you on a, a, a new course this afternoon and all of a sudden your life has changed in a week. Amen. See, the enemy would like you to think you've got to sort of pay some sort of penance for all your mistakes that you made in the past. But I'm telling you, when you cry out to him in faith and he's the one you're seeking, he's the one, it's not just, it wasn't just me seeking him because I was in trouble. It was like I would finally got to the end of Justin. Because trust me, <laughs> that time when I stole the car and I had broken into the cars and the police were chasing me <laughs> and I'm down in a ravine and I've got cop lights shining over my head. <laughs> you know what? I got real spiritual real fast. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm laying, I'm, I was not planning to tell this story. So <laughs> I was sitting there and I'm, <laughs> and <laughs> I was at a dealership, and, and see, if you go to the used car dealership, that's where they would have the, the good stereo systems, and so I would break into the cars and, and, and steal the stereo systems. And... and so, so, so I'm standing there, and all of a sudden, my friend goes, 5-0. I run. I fall down this ravine and I'm sitting there and I'm going, oh Jesus, if you get me out of this, I will serve you all the days of my life. Oh God, I will serve you all the days. If you get me out of this, I'm waiting there and I have this J. Crew brown barn jacket over my head and I'm going, oh Jesus, oh. And my first thing is I don't want my parents to find out if my parents find out. And uh and also, I, wait, I don't know how long I waited, but finally, I just stopped hearing stuff. This was about three in the morning. And, and all of a sudden, I just, I was like, I, was like, I just got to go. And we had our, our getaway car was across the street. This is, this is on Route 50. Route 50 goes from Ocean City, Maryland, all the way to Sacramento, California. 3,067 miles. It's a major uh, Route 50 in Maryland. And I'm, and I'm running across. It's, 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 it's three lanes across to the other side. And as I'm running... All of a sudden, there was a telephone pole that was in the grass, and I hit it, running as fast as I can. Did a nosedive. I get up, and I'm, my adrenaline, I get up, I hop in the car, my friend Kevin looks at me, he goes, what happened to you? I had blood going all down my face. But I was like, thank God for mama's prayers, because... See, and I cried out to God. That was the point of the story. I cried out to God, but, but it was my cry out to God was just so I didn't get in trouble. But three years later, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And now it was a cry of faith. That when it was a cry of faith, he reached in and pulled me out. And in 10 months, I had experienced God, was being equipped with the word. And 10 months later, I went on my first mission trip. It changed my life forever, and it's why I'm doing what I'm doing today. 31 years later. Amen. Faith is not mechanical. Faith is relational. If you try to make faith mechanical, then when things don't happen in your time frame, you're gonna get offended at God. I've seen it, that, that all of a sudden is, is, is they take the teachings of Brother Copeland and Dr. Savell and the things that they really instilled into the body of Christ in the early days and people all of a sudden, they'll take little things that they like and, and all of a sudden they'll be speaking things and, and they'll doing that, those things, but it's a spirit of faith. You know, 2 Corinthians 4, man, I wasn't planning to go here, but 2 Corinthians 4 says, says, in we having the same spirit of faith, I have believed, therefore have I spoken. 
We believe, therefore we speak. See, a lot of times people are speaking, but they haven't got to the point of believing yet. Now, speaking is great when you're in meditation and you're meditating upon the word and speaking it. But the thing is, is belief comes down to where I have a know that I 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 know. And I'm not treating God as some sort of genie lamp, abracadabra, and hope the genie pops out and brings my prosperity. When really God wasn't the problem, it was your lack of obedience. But you're like, well, I said it three times. But he also told you about other things you needed to get right in your finances in the process. And people say, oh, that word of faith stuff, it, it doesn't, that word of faith, they're just trying to get, get things from, they're, shut up. Oh my gosh. Say, oh, well, that, that name it and claim it. Well, if you don't believe name it and claim it, I really doubt you're even saved to begin with. Because, because if you were born again, then you have to believe, name it, and claim it. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. So if you don't believe, name it, and claim it, then you are not saved. Call me, name it, and claim it. <laughs> because faith is relational, not mechanical. Faith's foundation. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. That's exactly right. And it goes on and say, and the worlds were framed by the word of God. Yes. See, I believe name it and claim it because God believes name it and claim it. Yes. The worlds were framed, right. fashioned and created by God's word. Let there be light and there was light. Yes. So if you have a problem with name it and claim it, then you have a problem with how God created the heavens and the earth. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Faith is relational, it's not mechanical. So now faith is the substance of things, substance of things, substance of things evidence of things not seen. Everything that you see and can't see was made by faith. You can't see an atom, but everything's made up of atoms. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the, the substance. Faith is the substance. So let me ask a question. What is the substance of faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So what is the substance to our faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I want to take it even a little deeper. Why the word of God? Because I can, I can know scriptures like, God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I can know scriptures like that God always causes me to triumph. I can, I can know scriptures that, um, that, that talk about my, that, that by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. So I can know scriptures. So scriptures are what it, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, right? So the scriptures are the walls, so to speak, to my house of faith. But every house, if it's going to be strong, has to have a foundation, So what is the foundation? What is the substance of faith? Yes, it's the word, but why do I get into the word? Is it so I can memorize scripture? No, I get to know him. Yes. Thank you, Father. 
People try to build faith without a foundation. We can have powerful scriptures within our heart, but you don't, but you have to understand. You have to have an understanding. Thank you, Father. The word gets me to know him. So when I'm reading the word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm reading the word of God, but oftentimes we've took it in a, in, a, in a place of memorizing scripture, but not understanding the word is about me getting to know him personally. His character. Thank you, Pastor Annette. Galatians 5, 6, you need to turn there. The scripture, a lot of times we'll read the scripture and it will say, faith works by what? Love. But that's not the whole scripture. The scripture says something to this effect. It says, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails nothing, doesn't avail. Meaning it's not your outward show to let you know that you're a Jew or not a Jew. Is not the outward works of the flesh. It's neither circumcision nor uncircumcision that avails anything. So it's not about your religious ritual that causes God to move. See, if, we, if, we're, just, if we're just memorizing scripture and quoting scripture and, and speaking it like I would to a genie lamp, then the issue is that's just like either circumcision or uncircumcision doesn't avail. But what avails? What avails? What produces power? What produces ability? It's faith that works by love. That's right. That's right. See, that's the foundation to the faith. What's the substance of faith? The substance of faith is love. It's the love of God. If I don't know God's love, then I can quote scripture all day long, but what's gonna happen if it doesn't come to pass in the time frame? I'm gonna say, God, see God, you, you didn't do this. God, you didn't do that. God, you didn't do this. But when you're established in the fact that God loves you, that God cares about you, that he's on your side, that why? Because faith is relational. We get into the word to know him. We're honoring our heritage of faith today. These are the things that I've learned from Dr. Savell since 1999, 1998 was the first time I ever heard him preach. What is our faith built upon? The love of God. It's his character. It's his person. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. If you, we do not have a proper foundation, we will be easily shaken. If we don't have a proper foundation, we'll be easily shaken. I want to talk about three. That was my foundation. That was the intro. <laughs> Won't keep you long here. Mm. I want you to, if you're taking notes, I want you to make, make a note like this that says, I have unshakable faith because. I have unshakable faith because. And I'm sure there's more than three in scripture, but I'm gonna deal with three of them. Hallelujah. The first one I wanna talk about is, I have unshakable faith. Now this, everything is built upon the love of God, Okay. That's the, that's the foundation. But what does the love of God look like as it pertains to my heart? Because we can just blank and say, oh, well, God is love. But what does that mean? What does that mean? That's, that's so ethereal. It's like, oh, well, God is love. But how do I walk that love out? What's going to be the, the mortar within my foundation that's gonna be the core of who I am when I'm standing in faith. Yes, the love of God. Faith works by love. Faith has, faith gets its energy from love. But what does it look like? I have unshakable faith, number one, because God doesn't lie. God 
doesn't lie. Let's look at some verses for that. And, and I'm going to read these. Um, we may turn to a couple of them, but the first one you can take note of is in Numbers 23, verse 19. When I came to this scripture, I thought of Vic, because Vic, this is one of Vic's favorite scriptures. Yes, sir. Remember, this is all established on the love of God. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and, ha and, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will not make it good? Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Amen. 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 So when God has blessed something, God can't reverse it. Why? Because he doesn't lie. So when I'm standing upon the word of God, then what, what's, what's causing me to be unshakable is, hey, God, you don't lie. You don't lie. I'm going to stand here. Even if I'm going to heaven, I'm going to stand here because you don't lie. If you go to Titus 1, verse 2. Titus. Titus. That's not in the, that's not in the Old Testament. If you're at Hebrews, just... Go, go left, too. <laughs> Titus 1. Hallelujah. Verse 1 says, of Titus 1 says, Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. So it's talking about the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth. So we're talking about faith and we're talking about truth. So we're talking about faith in the word, right? Which accords with godliness. So this faith in this word should change my character. Not a whole lot of amens on that, okay. <laughs> but verse two says, in hope of eternal life, in hope of eternal life, which God, what does it say? Who cannot lie. Who God, who cannot lie promise before time began. So the promises he made long, means that you don't let go of the truth even though the promise was since the time that began. You didn't let go, why? Because God hasn't changed. God doesn't lie. God who cannot lie, he promised before time began. And I want you to know there's some things that he's promised in you and promised through you from the foundation of the time and whatever he has done, said and declared over you, he cannot lie. Now you may say you you might say well but Justin you you don't you don't know what I'm going through you don't know the mistakes I'm, I don't care he's promised something and he has a destiny for you and he cannot lie all it takes is for you to get in line with his word get in line with the destiny for your life you might have got off plan A six years ago but I tell you this morning you can get back on plan A and he'll take you right back to where you need to be why because he cannot lie. He cannot lie. So when I have a relationship with the word of God, it's not just these words of scripture, but now when I read the words, it's like, God, wait a minute, you can't lie. This is what you, I didn't say that you said this. God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Now get this, now listen, but has in due time manifested his word. But what word is he talking about? Promises, right? That's, that's, that's the, that's the um, what he's dealing with in context. But has in due time manifested his word through what? Preaching. Hey, preaching's a good thing. Hallelujah. Manifested his word through preaching, which was committed to me according to the commandment of the Savior. And Paul's saying, hey, man, Titus, hey, this word, you have to keep preaching this word because when you preach this word, faith comes. And when you preach this word, also, it's not just about the word, but it's understanding that God can't lie. Yeah. So Paul's not just saying, hey, just talk about scriptures, but he's talking about, talk about God's character and nature. Without turning there, Hebrews 6, 19 says, in which it is possible, impossible, impossible for God to lie. 
It's not that God doesn't want to lie. It's impossible for him to lie. So I have unshakable faith because God can't lie. And that, that, that whole, that's, that's a relational thing between, between humanity and God. That's relational. The second one, I have unshakable faith because God doesn't change. I have unshakable faith because God doesn't change. There's more than this, but I want to bring out four scriptures. If you're taking notes, you can go back and listen. Malachi 3, 6. It says, for I am the Lord. I do not change. Can you, I mean, can you get any simpler than that? Now, Justin's changed quite a bit from time to time, but even in the midst of me changing, God hasn't changed. For I am the Lord, I do not change, therefore you are not consumed. Aren't you grateful that God doesn't change? Because if God did change, then they would have been burnt to a crisp. I'm grateful for his mercy. How about you? Hallelujah. Next, uh, you can write down is Hebrews 13, 8. Does anyone know this one? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then it says, don't be carried about by strange doctrines. See, strange doctrines are gonna pull you away from his nature and his character. So say this with me. I have unshakable faith because God doesn't lie. I have unshakable faith because God doesn't change. Now let's look at the third one. Third one is, I have unshakable faith because God always keeps covenants. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, first scripture you can uh, just make note of, Deuteronomy 7, 7 through 9. Part of that verse says this, Lord, your God is faith, a faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations. Psalms 89. I mean, I would read the whole chapter, but we'll just keep it to a couple verses. I think 32 through 34 says this, Nevertheless, my loving kindness, I will not utterly take from him, nor allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. Wow. So in this one, we have covenant, faithfulness, and he won't lie. Psalms 105, 7 through 10. says, O seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Are you a chosen one? Yes. Man, Peter tells us that we're his chosen generation, a royal priesthood, right? His chosen ones. Now get this. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. He remembers his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for a statue to Israel as an everlasting covenant. I have unshakable faith because God always keeps covenant. Let me close with this. Let's go to 2 Timothy. It's like, how do, you, how do we stop today? <laughs> mm. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy, chapter 1. Mm. Let me start wrong. Thank you, Father. Let's look in verse 8. It says, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, 
nor of me, his prisoner. But share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mm. Now I know why. For the gospel according to the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling. I just sense this for some people here. No, you're called with a holy calling. Meaning that calling is not about you, but it's about you and God. The enemy would love to steal your calling. The enemy would love to steal your purpose. And I declare the enemy will not steal your purpose and will not steal your destiny. You've been called with a holy calling. You've been called with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his purpose. His purpose, his purpose is running after you today. It's not, we, we have to stop playing games and this, this is just a little rabbit show. We have to stop playing games with the kingdom. You've been called with a holy calling. It's not according to your works, but it's according to his purpose. His purpose. His purpose far outweighs anything you could ask, think, dream, or imagine. Hallelujah. I, there's some hearts that are being ministered to. Hallelujah. His purpose will be fulfilled in your life and ministry. Amen. That, that, that widow woman was crying out day and night and said, and said, you know, he said, after a while, but yet with God, with God, he said, crying out day and night and said, he will avenge them speedily. God's gonna work on you and work on your purpose speedily. It's gonna be a quick work. It's gonna be a quick work. All he's wanting you to do is say, hey, here I am. You know, I didn't finish reading it, but Luke 18 goes on and says, when the son of man returns. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When the Son of Man returns, Jesus is coming back quickly. He's coming back quickly. Hallelujah, he's coming back quickly. And it says, when he returns, will he find faith in the earth? Will he find faith in the earth? He's looking for hearts that are running after him. Stop playing games. It's time to get right with Jesus. It's time to pursue his purpose in your life. Hallelujah. 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 Will he find faith in the earth? He's looking for a people that will pray and not faint. Mm, thank you, Lord. Verse 10. But has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. You know what? You're, you, you, you and I are living forever. When we leave this tabernacle, so to speak, it's just transition. Hallelujah. He abolished death. That's verse 10 of chapter two, of chapter one of Second Timothy. He abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was pointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. You see, the enemy was trying to come against Paul so he wouldn't preach the message of faith. Yes. So he wouldn't preach the law of faith and he wouldn't preach the spirit of faith. That's why I suffer these things. Do you think Paul ever had a down day? Yes, he had a down day. I mean, in second, you read 2 Corinthians chapter one, he was like, we had the sentence, sentence of death in ourselves. Man, have you had the sentence of death in yourself because you've been persecuted and stoned three times, left for dead, shipwrecked several times? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Suffer these things. But get, get this, nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. Amen. Now, this is Paul speaking. Yes. A man of faith. 
who was suffering things, that was going through things. You could say this was his widow experience. That's good. That's good. Not everyone experienced the same battles. Not every one of us experienced the same things. Yours could be battling drugs. Yours could be battling uh, homosexual lifestyles. Yours could be battling financial things. You could be battling sickness in your body. It could be battling all sorts of things. But Paul said, I'm suffering these things. He says, nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. Why was he not ashamed? Because his life was founded upon something. He had a foundation to his faith, and it was just more than a memorized scripture. His life was built upon the foundation of the character, the quality, and the love of God that he found through the law, through the prophets, and through the message of Jesus, and through his personal visitation of Jesus that Galatians 1 talks about. I'm not ashamed. Why? For I know. You know what? He didn't say, I know what I believe. It, yes, we, we wanna, I want to know what you believe, but more importantly, I want to know whom you believe. Yeah, that's right. that's Paul didn't say, I know what I believe. He, know, he, he was letting us know about a person. It was a person. It was a person. Fall in love with the person today. Get acquainted with the person today. Yes, get into the word, but get into the word to get to know the person today. Hallelujah. Get to know the person today. The just shall live by faith is not about just knowing some scriptures, but it's about knowing the person of the scriptures. I know in whom I have believed. I know in whom I have believed. But it's not just I know whom I have believed and says this, and I'm persuaded. Meaning you can't talk me out of it. You put a gun to my head, you cannot talk me out of it. You cannot talk me out of it. Why? I'm fully persuaded. I am unshakable. Paul had unshakable faith because he knew that God didn't lie. Paul had unshakable faith because he knew that God didn't change. He had unshakable faith because he knew that God always kept covenant. I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he, God, is able to keep. To keep. To keep. He keeps his word. He keeps his covenant. He's able to keep what I've committed to him until that day. Let me ask you a question. What have you committed to God? Paul was all in. I've committed. He's going to keep what I've committed to him until that day. What day? Until I go home or Jesus returns. In this hour, God's looking for our commitment. What are we committing to him? Ultimately, it comes down to this. Paul said, pretty much, I've committed my life. And I'm persuaded that he's going to keep me until that day. My life is not my own, but I've been bought with a price. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, not I that lives, but it's Christ that lives within me. And the life that I now, I live right now, the life I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Paul was telling me, I'm not even living by my own faith anymore, but my faith I have is in him. So we have unshakable faith when we can trust an unchangeable God, a God that doesn't lie, and a God that always keeps covenant. Stand to your feet.